A SpaceX Starlink speed boost might be right around the corner. Let's get into it. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for joining me for Tea Time. Today, we have a little bit of stormy weather. The skunk guys, getting over the cold. I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, hanging out, talking space, SpaceX, Starlink, Linux, all kinds of good tech. Today we're going to be talking about SpaceX Starlink and a speed boost that might be right around the corner. The FCC is doing what they need to do. SpaceX has already done what they needed to do. So, we'll see. Maybe we're going to end up with some faster speeds, lower latency. Everything that Elon Musk has been talking about. So, we'll see what ends up happening here. I wanted to read to you an article that I found over on PC Magazine. And there was a couple other ones I threw in some info from. As I always do, I try to call things together and give you all of the information so you don't have to read a whole bunch of things to be able to get current information. So anyways, I want to go through this and then I want to ask you, what do you think about all this? Do you want to see faster speeds with SpaceX Starlink? Is what you have currently good enough? So down below, I want to hear from you. What do you think about all this? If you don't want to put anything down there, just put an emoji, whatever you like. It's fine with me. If you enjoy the content, throw it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Do all of those things. If you want to give back to the channel, there's a little button down there. You can hit that and give a dollar or two if you like. If not, it's perfectly fine. The video is still free. Consider becoming a member of the channel. That would be even better. And if you want more SpaceX Starlink content, I put together about 460 videos. There's a link over here. Don't click on it yet. When you're done watching this video, click over there. And once again, you'll see about 460, close to 470 videos now. Helpful how-tos, tips, tricks, what to do, what not to do, what to buy, what not to buy. And the why behind everything, because this channel has always been and always will be about the why, as I always say. So, let's jump right into this article. It starts out by saying, The FCC considers easing Starlink restrictions. The Federal Communication Commission, or the FCC, is poised to consider relaxing radio emission restrictions for SpaceX Starlink's satellite internet service. SpaceX has long pushed for these changes, arguing that the current rules deemed outdated hamper the ability to deliver faster, more reliable broadband from space. Chairman Carr previews up-and-coming agenda. The FCC Chairman Brendan Carr previewed the agency's up-and-coming agenda on Friday, highlighting a proposal to, quote, unleash even faster and more robust broadband service from space. He pointed to plans for updating regulations in the KA and KU band frequencies, which he called, quote, workhorse satellite frequencies, powering next-generation low-Earth orbit LEO constellations like Starlink. Very interesting, next generation low Earth orbiting LEO constellations. That's not necessarily just Starlink, that could also be Project Kuiper. Keep that in mind. While Carr didn't explicitly name Starlink, this service relies heavily on these bands to transmit data. Outdated rules stifle innovation. Carr explained that the FCC's technical rules set 30 years ago impose power limits designed to shield geostationary satellite systems from interference. However, these restrictions now hinder modern non-geostationary systems such as SpaceX Starlink, despite technological advancements that could enable spectrum sharing without disruption. Quote, new innovations have been held back, Carr noted, signaling the FCC's intent to reassess this decade-old framework at its next meeting. SpaceX pushes for rule changes. SpaceX has been vocal about the need for change. In August, the company urged the FCC to revise the, quote, equivalent power flux density or EPFD limits. Equivalent power flux density, Doc. <laughs> Sounds like back to the future or something. Which cap the energy satellites can beam to and from the ground equipment. SpaceX argues these 25-year-old rules favor legacy geostationary satellites over LEO systems, limiting SpaceX Starlink's potential. Quote, the revision would increase satellite coverage and service quality. SpaceX claimed, promising high-speed, low-latency broadband for all Americans and boosting competition in the market. Opposition from Legacy Operators 
Last month, SpaceX doubled down, submitting a letter requesting a waiver to exceed the current EPFD downlink limits as part of its plan to upgrade SpaceX Starlink with gigabit speeds. Gigabit, people. Gigabit. Unbelievable. The company insists it can operate beyond these caps while still protecting geostationary operations from interference. However, rivals like DISH, Echostar, Viasat, EU Telesat, and OneWeb, traditional geostationary operators, oppose the waiver citing potential risks. This opposition suggests that the FCC's rule revision could spark a contentious debate. Oh no! Not a contentious debate, people. <laughs> that would be horrible. A history of regulatory support. The push for updated regulations isn't new. Former FCC Chair Jessica Rosenworcel also advocated modernizing satellite rules to foster competition, a stance that aligns with SpaceX's goals. Yet, Carr's announcement feels like a tailored victory for the company. SpaceX, which has consistently lobbied for flexibility to enhance Starlink's performance. Recent wins and future stakes. This isn't SpaceX's first regulatory win recently. Last month, the FCC granted a separate waiver relaxing radio emission rules for SpaceX Starlink's cellular service aimed at connecting phones directly to satellites. The latest proposal, though, targets the broader constellation, promising widespread benefits if approved. As the FCC prepares to vote, relaxing power limits could transform Starlink into a more formidable broadband player. It's like the biggest. What are you talking about? Though, operators' pushback will test the balance between innovation and stability in the satellite spectrum. Well, all right. Some of this stuff is a little bit over the top, not right, as you can imagine. This happens with a lot of the rags. So PC Magazine does a pretty good balancing act. They push slightly left, but they're more in the middle um, compared to most of the rags that you read today, which are just so just horrendous, just against Elon, against the administration, against anything that... Um, Elon is doing. It doesn't matter which company it is. Burn Tesla, people. Burn them. Burn them down. <laughs> they used to be the best thing since sliced bread, as I always say, right? <sighs> Anyways, I digress. So, this is good. This is really good because this means that SpaceX Starlink is this close to getting the release to use a stronger signal, let's call it, right? More of the frequency. Um, this is big. This is really big because what that will do is, as they alluded to here in the article, it's going to be able to push the signal in such a way that it will allow for gigabit transfers. Gigabit. Not megabit. Gigabit. That is massive. Now, I talked to you guys about this in the past, and I have a feeling, and I kind of know at this point, that Gigabit has already been tested with SpaceX Starlink on the version 3 satellites. There are a couple up there, as far as my understanding is, and yes, they're able to hit Gigabit without a problem. That being said, who will get the Gigabit? Will you and I? Probably not, unless you are a business person paying for a business account. Chances are you're probably not going to get Gigabit. That being said, that means that it's right around the corner, all right? Elon Musk has said from the very beginning he wants to get his service not only into the hands of the entire world and connect the world through this mesh network of satellites, but also to be able to get low latency, sub 20 milliseconds speed, as well as gigabit as far as download speeds. Upload, I'm not sure what it's going to be. Obviously, it won't be symmetrical. I'm gonna guess they'll probably be able to hit around 100 megabits up eventually, but the down speed is what a lot of people want. They wanna be able to stream a lot. They wanna be able to have a ton of incoming data, and you'll be able to do that at a gigabit all day long. It's just like a fiber connection at that point. And at 20 milliseconds or sub 20 milliseconds, it is pretty damn close. I would say it's close to copper, right? A cable company near you but from 550 kilometers in space. 
So this is really big information. I love to see it. You know, Rosenworcel over there was, you know, one of the chair. Now, of course, we have Carr. And also, like I said before, this is not just going to benefit SpaceX Starlink. This will benefit Jeff Bezos' project Kuiper once it does get aloft, so to speak. Talking about Bezos and Project Kuiper, tomorrow they're going to supposedly launch 27 satellites through ULA. I'm going to cover it live. So be here, hang out with me, and let's see if it actually launches. And do they actually deploy the 27 satellites? Because remember, this will be the first, first 27 Project Kuiper satellites in LEO. This once again will happen tomorrow, I believe right around 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So once again, be here. I'll probably be here an hour early. We'll see. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this. If you have, once again, throw the video a thumbs up. Don't forget to share the video and the channel with your friends, family, colleagues, Reddit, Facebook, wherever that will help grow the channel. Write something down below. If you don't want to, put an emoji. At least I know that you made it to the end of the video. Finally, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all of my merch and my shirts and my tees and my books and everything else. If there's something you like over there, please pick it up. Help support me and my family. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay connected, and we'll see you tomorrow. Take care, guys.